Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Welcome learners. My name is Stephen Kariungi. Today we continue with our topic of discussion in chemistry from 3. Uh, the topic is nitrogen and its compounds. So last lesson we discussed the laboratory isolation of nitrogen from the air. So today I would like us to <coughs> discuss the uh, industrial or the large scale isolation of nitrogen from the air. How is this done in a large scale? Previously, we saw how it is done in a small scale. So, <coughs> large scale, also known as industrial isolation of nitrogen uh, from the air. So on this, uh, we are saying that uh, basically uh, the main source of nitrogen uh, is the atmosphere because we know that uh, atmospheric air has 78% uh, nitrogen. So we're going to have a, a diagram to illustrate this. So first of all, we have air, and the first chamber, the air is passed through filters, and the work of the filters is to remove any impurities, such as the dust particles that may be there, such as smoke. Then this air, and this is now filtered air, is then taken through an intake pump where it is pumped into another chamber and this chamber contains concentrated sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide. So we can refer to this chamber as the absorption chamber. So the air that is getting into the absorption chamber is uh, dust free, dust free air. So the dust has already been removed at the filters. And then in the absorption chamber, where there is conch sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide, the carbon four oxide is absorbed. So on this other side, uh, we have CO2 free air. Air that is free from CO2. It is then taken to the next chamber. And this one is the condenser. And here the air is cooled to negative 25 degrees Celsius, a very low temperature, and this allows all the water vapor that is present in the air to condense uh, into a liquid, then freeze into a solid, and then it is left there. So all the water vapor will be removed in the condenser or the condensation uh, chamber. So the air that is coming out of this chamber is uh, air free, air free from water vapor, water vapor. We know of course the air has water vapor because of the humidity. So the water vapor is uh, condensed here uh, to a very low temperature until it crystallizes. So water vapor crystallizes. 
So the air free from the water vapor is then taken to another chamber, that is the compressor, where it is compressed at a very high pressure of about 200, uh, 200 atmospheres, 200 ATMs. That's a very high pressure and repeated expansion and contraction of the air because of that high pressure lowers the temperature of that air to negative 200 degrees Celsius. So the air uh, is, the air's temperature is lowered to 200, negative 200 degrees Celsius and at that point the air changes into a liquid. So here we have what we call liquefied air. We have liquefied air and that liquefied air is then taken to the fractional distillation. Chamber, the fractional distillation chamber where nitrogen collects at negative 196 degrees Celsius we obtain nitrogen there. Then next after nitrogen, we have negative 186 degrees Celsius. We obtain argon. And then finally at negative 183 degrees Celsius, we obtain oxygen. So basically that is uh, how the large scale or the industrial isolation of nitrogen from the air is done. So we are saying first, uh, the air is first passed through filters to remove dust particles and the removal of those dust particles at the filter and the filters involve a process by a process called electrostatic precipitation. The process by which the dust particles are removed at the filters is called electrostatic uh, precipitation. So this dust free air is then taken into an intake pump where it is pumped into the absorption chamber that contains uh, the concentrated sodium hydroxide. So we are saying that the air is then passed through concentrated sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide can also be used in this chamber to absorb to absorb carbon four oxide to absorb carbon four oxide gas and then next the carbon four oxide gas is then passed through the CO2 free air is uh, cooled to negative 25 degrees Celsius to allow all the water vapor, all the water vapor to crystallize, to crystallize. So as the air is coming out of that point, it is minus the water vapor. It's air free from water vapor. The air is then passed through the compressor. The compressor maintained at 200 atmospheres, that's a very high pressure. 200 atmospheres <clears throat> and here the repeated 
expansion is the air will expand and contract the repeated expansion and contraction of the air lowers its temperature lowers its temperature to negative 200 degrees celsius and the air the air liquefies changes into a liquid that's a very low temperature the air liquefies or changes into a liquid then the liquid air or the liquefied air is taken into fractional distillation chamber fractional distillation chamber uh, where nitrogen distills fast at negative 196 degrees celsius of course due to its lower boiling point compared to the others nitrogen has a very low boiling point due to its lower boiling point compared to argon which is negative 186 degrees celsius and lastly oxygen at negative 183 degrees celsius so basically uh, the nitrogen that is uh, obtained here is more pure than the one that is isolated from the lab. So this nitrogen is relatively pure because it contains very little noble gases of course one of the noble gases has already been removed which is argon and it is the dominant or it's the majority so the remaining ones have very little uh, percentages that are almost negligible so that is basically how the process is done uh, the large scale uh, or the industrial isolation of nitrogen uh, from the air So the first question in the assignment, during the isolation of nitrogen uh, from the air in large scale, uh, state the role of absorption chamber, B, condensation chamber, and C, compressor. Uh, then, number two, explain why fractional distillation is done. Why fractional distillation is done in the above process. So we are going to stop there. Until next time, goodbye.